Hello and welcome to this short video to show you how this Gantt chart actually works. So let me go over to the first one here. The first slide I have is about the Gantt chart. So let me click on the Gantt chart and up come. And I'm clicking on the about box here. So the about sheet, I mean. So it's created by Maureen Chetto, who is actually an Excel guru and a data analyst. You can contact Maureen here if you have any questions on this. She says it here. This video is here. It's on YouTube, of course. And some of the features which I will go through as well in a moment, they are there. Okay, so let's see what the next slide is. The next slide is the Gantt chart layout. So I have to go back to the Gantt chart and I click on here. Okay, so let me introduce you to the top here. So on the top, we have the project name and the company name. Then we have the dates and these are dynamic. So for example, you see here, they, it goes up to April the 3rd. And if I go further, let's say, if I go, um, I'm going to type in six, change it to six and see what happens. And you see automatically it adds in other week numbers on top here. And that's great. So the, the diagram is completely dynamic. And when you're selecting the weeks, then this also takes it from here as well, which is very, very good. Okay, uh, this is where we put our deliverables. We can put our also here, uh, we have a tree. I just, for the moment, it's just two like uh, levels. You can put a third level in there if you wish. And then we have the week number here. You can choose the week number. Then we put the estimated number of weeks. More about that in a moment. Then you choose the priority. That's based on Moscow, but there is must, should have, could have, or won't have. You can also say this is a milestone and the status of it if you change it to, let's say, done, it goes to green. So it's a very nice way of reporting on your project as well. And then you can assign different people as well here using their initial. Okay, so let's see what's next. Next we have the, all right, I'm going to import deliverables from a mind map. So let me go to a mind map um, here. And this is, let's say we did a workshop or two to break down a project and we use a mind map to do that. You can also use post-its. But if you use a mind map, you have the data in electronic format. So I want to copy this data and put it in the Gantt chart without having to retype anything. OK, so I can do that by clicking here and then exporting this out to a text file like so. I open it and this is the data here. So I can just copy this. And you see that there are three levels. It's one, two, three. So I copy it into here. Then I go back to the Excel file. I go into this temp. I have here, and you see if I put it in, it's like three columns it took up. So I just take these two columns, then I go back to the here, and now I'm going to paste this in, but I'm going to paste it in with the values only, okay? It's here, all right, and that's my data. So I go from very quick from our project breakdown into this here, and now I can start scheduling, and I can say, okay, this happens on week, let's say one, let me go up here, and I can say the time it took two weeks to do that, and so on. And let's say if it's a must to be done, so I leave it like that. And I can just leave it like that because it's it's quite nice. Let's put something as done actually, just to, to show that how it changes. And then let's put the last one to say this is a milestone. So I could say this happens on week 10, let's say at the very end. And I can say that it takes, let's say, two weeks to do that. It's a little bit slow to respond, but don't worry, it, it comes up like that. And then I choose it here. I go, it's a milestone. And it puts this red dot here, or this red diamond, and I can put the statuses to do. Okay, again, it takes about a second and a half to two seconds to respond when you put in something, but you'll get used to that and it works out very well. So it's very easy to actually uh, to use. And then you can assign people here, um, just put in the initials of the person and they know exactly what to do. Okay, good. Now what's next? If I go back here, we see that I've done basic scheduling. That's what I've done there. And then add into deliverable specifications. Okay, this is the, one of the biggest requirements was that I would like to be able to put specifications requirements information behind each deliverable without having to go to a different application. So what we've done was the following. So for example, invite designs, if I click here on view, 
it comes up like so. So I'm able to put the information in here. I had this already added. So the purpose of the invoice is to contain all the necessary information. And then I have the specifications here. So now I can just give that task to somebody like um, John Johnson, let's say. And then John will know exactly what they have to do. And if they click on here, they can see the specifications which they have to do. So that's like the definition of done. And that's really, really great. You can also put a URL link in here if you need it. Now, um, if I go then to, oh yeah, I can navigate using this as well. So if I click on here, you see this is just a template and I can go to the next row like so. Or I can choose it like so, and then click display current row. Oh, there's no data included there yet, but I can add that. So after adding something, you can save it, and that works out very well. Okay, that was good. What else? Adding specifications, that's done. Then Excel macro. Yeah, so sometimes when you download a macro file, it comes up with a warning to say that you shouldn't be able to be careful. And so a good way to get over this is just to save the file locally and then open it again. And then you should be able to access the Excel file, uh, the macro file, I mean. But if not, you can go to file options, then go to trust center, and then go to something called uh, trust locations and put in the path of where you download the file. And that should work quite okay. Uh, what the one last slide? Yeah, the latest version. If you want to find the latest version of the Excel file, just go to YouTube and type in Gantt Excel Maureen. And at the in the description, there'll be a link to the latest version of the file. Okay. I think I forgot to show you one thing, and that was the columns. Yeah, so if you want to add an extra column, like some people like to add percentage done, you could do that here. Do it on this column. Let's say I do it here. And you can add the column like so, percentage done. And in that way, uh, oh no, let's say we add it afterwards. I add it here. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And now you see it's a simple text file or a simple um, cell here. And you can then add percentage done if you wish. Put it in like so. All right. That's it. I've shown you everything. I hope you enjoy using this. And um, yeah, thanks for any feedback. Bye-bye.